Before I get to the meat of part three here, I want to give away a little more specific version of my goal that I'm trying to get to. Um, the, the primes, of course, are an infinite list of numbers, famous result, goes back thousands of years. Um, and so you might think that it'd be reasonable to look for an infinite list of anti-primes. And we've already got uh, candidates. We've got the uh, superabundant numbers. Uh, we've got the highly composite numbers. Um, and those are reasonable candidates for what you could call an anti-prime. But it turns out that um, what I'm shooting for is actually something much more manageable. Uh, and maybe a little surprising, a finite list of the best of the best of um, very highly divisible numbers. And so this list of highly composite numbers, for example, that we had, uh, I'd like to winnow that down if some, in some way. And Ramanujan, uh, about 100 years ago, uh, he looked at a way to pick out some particularly unusual record setters among the highly composite numbers. So to do that, let's look a little bit um, about how d of n, the divisor function, grows as n grows. So here's the graph again that I showed before. Um, and what's known, what was known even before Ramanujan is that, uh, way long before, is that the divisor function grows slower than any positive power of n. So less than square root, which is n to the 1 half, or cube root, n to the 1 third. Those are all functions that start out steep and then get less and less steep as you go. And that's indeed, looks like the outer envelope of this has that kind of shape. Starts out growing pretty fast, and then slower and slower and slower. Notice the scale, of course. Ten, this is uh, 10 to the fourth here, and this is just uh, 20, 40, 60 here. So fast growth is uh, you know, relatively fast, anyway. Um, so if you know a bit about um, slow growing functions, you might say, hey, wait a minute. Maybe it grows like the natural logarithm function. That's a famously slow growing function. It's the most famous function that does grow and yet grows slower than any positive power of n. Well, not quite. Um, it grows, it can be slightly bigger than uh, the growth of ln n, but not much. And we'll talk about that even more precisely uh, in a later video in this series. If you want a slightly different view of it, here's a semi log plot. And all the other plots are going to be semi-log plots from now on. When you've got this huge scale on the, the bottom, it makes sense to, uh, to look at that uh, as a logarithmic scale. Now it looks like this guy's actually speeding up in its growth, but that's really just a, an artifact of the, um, the semi-log plot. It's because here, 10 to the 4th, 10 to the 5th is compressed into just this much. OK, so here's the, the shape on a semi-log plot. Now, um, one thing to note is that uh, I don't want you to assume that this function grows slowly right at the start. Again, what I said was, if you look at this guy, it actually grows rather fast right at the start. And it actually grows um, quite a bit faster than, say, like n to the 1 fourth or n to the 1 fifth or n to the 1 tenth uh, as you start out. And we'll compare it in just a second. The point is that it just doesn't keep that kind of growth up. So here's Ramanujan's strategy. Um, we compare it, and I don't know if he was the absolute first to, to do this, but it's the first paper that I know of, certainly the most famous one. Um, so what we do is we compare the d of n function to some n to the a. And you want to think of a as like a half or a third or a tenth or one hundredth. Okay? And what's going to happen is you're going to get a maximum because it starts out growing faster. So when I say compare it, um, I really mean divide it. I was going to say that. Okay. Um, so we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to take d sub n, or d of n, and we're going to divide it by n to the a. That's a good way to compare two numbers, just take the, take the, the ratio. Okay? The ratio of that, it turns out, is going to maximize, because d of n starts out growing faster than n to the a, let's say like n to the 1.6 or something like that, we'll, we'll see in a minute. But then it eventually fades out and doesn't grow as fast, and so then the ratio is going to start going down. So here's some plots to convince you. Okay, these are all done with MATLAB, by the way. Um, so here's a semi-log plot going from 10 to the 0, which is 1, up to about, um, it's about 5,000. I think I actually went to 5,040, exactly. And um, what I'm plotting is the d number of divisors of n divided by n to the 0. 0.6. I don't know if you can see that on, uh, with the resolution on YouTube, but it's n to the 0. 0.6 is what I'm using here. So <clears throat> it starts out, uh, moderate number, actually goes up a tiny bit, and then just starts plummeting. Because eventually, the end of the point 0.6 is growing faster than the d sub n. The, notice the, the, uh, the structure, the banded structure, has turned into not horizontal bands anymore, but basically copies of 
uh, n to the 0.6. All, they're all constant multiples of n to the n to the sorry n to the minus 0.6. Okay, so that's what happens with n to the 0.6. Notice that the maximum is right at six. Uh, at n equals six, that's the biggest this function ever gets. Okay, so that singles out n equals six as particularly good. When we compare it to this particular version of growth, this is the best it ever does in comparison comparison with that version of growth, n to the 0.6. If we look at n to the 0.5, that's square root n. Whoops, one one up. That's this guy here. Okay, then um, it actually does better for a little longer against n to the 0.5 because that doesn't grow quite as fast at the start, and then it maxes out at um, 12 as it turns out, and then starts to lose ground and forever ever ever after that. It's not keeping up, and the end of the 0.5 on the on the denominator is just going to make it get smaller and smaller. So here's another number that is particularly good when I compare it to this kind of growth, n to the 0.5 kind of growth. N equals 12 is the, the time when it's um, it's best competitive with that version of growth. Okay, what about um, 0.4? Uh, now the maximum's moving out. Now it's look, I think it's 120 here. So for a longer time, it's holding its own, and d of n over n to the 0.4 is actually growing for quite a while until 120, and then it starts going down. Okay, and so I've highlighted that. I don't know if you can see the little red x or star there. That's going to be a particularly good number. Okay, um, n equals point, or if a equals 0.3, that's right here. Uh, the maximum has moved out. Uh, it looks like it's something in the thousandths. I think it's 50-40 at this point. Yes, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Yeah, so 50-40, not too surprisingly, uh, the title of the, the series of talks, comes out as one of the winners when we compare it to the n to the 0.3 growth rate. One more, not to make it too tedious, but you just want to you know, you see the pattern. Uh, now I've changed the scale. Now it's going from 1,000 up to a million up to uh, 10 million. And here it's a little bit less, it's a little bit more even. It's not as dramatic a peak, but you can see that it's going up until something in the tens of thousands, almost a hundred thousand, and then gradually down. And then, ooh, even one more after that, the peak has moved out up to about a million. Okay, so what I claim is that these winners, there's not just one winner, it's a winner depending on exactly what value of A you pick. Now, uh, notice if I put Point two seven zero 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 one. It's probably going to be the same winner. It's only at for certain special values of a that it's going to change from one to the next. But eventually, as I crank up a, I'm going to pick a new winner going out, out, out to the right, bigger and bigger ends. So it's easy to show that these kinds of numbers must be highly composite numbers. They're going to be special, particularly special ones among those. Though it's not every highly composite number that's going to work. But the proof that it must be a highly composite number is pretty sim simple. We're looking at the things, we're looking at n, a special n, such that d of n over n to the a for some fixed a is greater than or equal to the same calculation for all other numbers, all other natural numbers. Okay, If that's true, what do we want to show? We want to show that it's highly composite. That just means if I pick a lower m, that d sub n, the number of divisors, should be bigger than d sub m, okay? or bigger than or equal to. Um, and indeed, um, uh, if you look at, if you just push the n to the a over, then d of n is greater than or equal to this factor, n to the a over m to the a, but n is bigger than m, so this number, because remember a is a positive number, this power is, uh, is going to be greater than 1, and so you get this. Okay. So um, it turns out that it's harder to be such a maximum for any, some given a than just being a highly composite number. Okay, so it turns out not all uh, highly composite numbers will appear as uh, in this kind of calculation where we judge things by are you the absolute best when you compare the rate of growth of d of n against some fixed uh, rate of growth n to the a for all possible a's. Okay, so as we've seen in the in the pictures, what we can do is we can tune uh, the maximum or where the maximum is we want by adjusting a. Okay. As a decreased, then what we saw is the maximum will move up the number line, and I did just show the graphs. It will move to the right. Um, so what we do is we call a number that's a maximum of d of n over n to the a for some a greater than 0, 
a superior highly composite number. I believe that's Ramanujan's terminology. It's a little awkward, but it's, it's okay. Alrighty. So this picks out um, a, a fairly thin subset of the highly composite numbers. Um, these guys are pretty special. There is an infinite number of them. As we tune A sl smaller and smaller and smaller to 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, you're going to keep changing where that maximum is. Remember that maximum moving here to here to here, moving out to the right, and it's never going to stop moving. So there is an infinite number of these guys. Okay. Um, so some nice things about superior highly composite numbers. Um, I noted that when you look at just plain highly composite numbers, the way the prime exponent pattern works is a little awkward, and sometimes you trade off a big prime for small for more copies of small primes. And that never happens with these superior highly composite numbers. Um, the ratio of each superior highly composite to the previous is an integer, and it's in fact a single prime. So to get to the next superior highly composite number, we just put in one more prime into the sequence. We, we increment one of the exponents by one. And sometimes it'll be a, a brand new prime. Uh, so uh, like uh, you didn't have, you had 17 to the 0 first on your number. You never had a 17 before. You're going to put that in. But once you put it in, you'll never take it away. Um, so just like with the highly composite numbers, sometimes you're going to add an extra power of a small prime to increase those exponents. Sometimes you're going to put in a new larger prime. And the pattern is still pretty subtle. Um, so we still get a decreasing sequence of exponents, of course, on the primes, but of a, a more special shape. So let's look at the list here. OK. Um, so here's a, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, the main thing um, we're looking at here is column B, F, and then G through W. OK, all this stuff. So here's uh, the superior highly composite numbers. We'll expl I'll explain what's going on with uh, this, with column C uh, later. Um, so here they are 2, 6, 12, 60, 120, 360, 25, 20, 50, 40, 55, 440. Um, these guys grow rather faster than just the just plain old highly composite numbers because we are picking out these special ones. Eventually, we want to use scientific notation, although I went ahead and just copied down the actual exact values just for fun. But what you can see is it's going 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 22. It's growing uh, kind of exponentially, uh, you know, roughly one more order of magnitude at each, at each stage. Um, here's the power to pattern of exponents. So again, this is like 2, 3, 5, 7. Here's all the primes. So for example, this is saying that, say, 144, 1440. So 1,441,440, that's a superior highly composite number. That's 2 to the 5th times 3 squared times 5 times 7 times 11 times 13, and then nothing else. Um, and as we go, of course, the two things that happen is the lower exponents increase, and then also occasionally we add a new prime, and there's a kind of an alternation, a very rough alternation between those. Um, here we didn't add a new exponent or a new prime for a long time, and we were just cranking up the 4 and the 2 to become, or 4, 2, 1 to become 5, 3, 2, for example. But then we add a new a prime, and then another new prime, and then we go back and add an old prime. And in fact, this column here, D, is uh, really, I think, the crucial thing for a lot of cases. All it says is, what's the ratio between this and the previous one? So we start with a, just a 2, and then we put in a 3, so it's 2 times 3. And then we put in a 2, so 12 is 2 times 3 times 2. And then 2 times 3 times 2 times 5. And then times 2 times 3 times 7. And this gives you a, an idea of this alternation. Sometimes you just go back to 2, and you put in a new power of 2, or a new power of 3. But sometimes you bring in a new prime. This is the first place 7 came up. Here's the first places 11 and 13 come up. Uh, then you go back to some small primes, fill in some, some stuff, bulk up the, the low guys. Then you go back and add 17 and 19. Then you go back and do a 2, and then 23. So this alternation between new big primes and uh, old ones. And of course, 2 comes in quite a bit. Um, I'll talk about the colors here and the CA and the CA ratio columns um, in probably the next video, and at least in a later video. So in any case, we've got a, a, a more manageable list now. It's roughly kind of one or two in every power of 10, every order of magnitude, that deserves to be really singled out as really, really divisible in terms of how big the d of n is 
compared to what you could expect, and precisely compared to some power of n, some small power of n. Um, so, um, as I said at the start of this video, could we actually come up with a finite list in some way? That's an interesting question. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the same kind of trick that Ramanujan did with d of n. We're going to do it with sigma, um, and that'll be in the next video.